so whenever you're ready. Hey, my name is Dan McCabe, and I am the testing and verification intern this year for Claremont Locally Grown Power, which is one of our CHIRP initiatives. Um, and what that task consists of for me is essentially uh, performing an experiment to test the validity of um, the ideal PV technology that our solar panels are going to rely upon. Um, and the essential inventions that we're trying to test here um, really pertain to what's called reverse bias. Um, what that means is that sometimes in the operation of a solar cell, generally when there's some shade, a leaf falls on a solar panel or something like that, um, a single cell in an array uh, of them, which uh, I'm I'll start <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. I was like, wow, he's getting more descriptive. Good. Time, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. okay. Yeah, just no, it's perfect. <laughs> I, I, if you want to like start over, just stop cool. and then go for it again. Hi, my name is Dan McCabe. And I'm the testing and verification intern for Claremont Locally Grown Power, one of our CHIRP initiatives. Um, and my task really pertains to um, testing the new technology, um, which is the patented ideal PV system um, that CLGP is using. And the core inventions there that we're trying to assess um, are really pertain to what's called reverse bias, um, which can happen in a solar panel um, when a leaf falls or some sort of uneven shading occurs and the result of that is that a single solar cell like we have here um, which is an individual component of a solar panel which is made up of many cells um, can be subjected to the opposite of the conditions that it normally would be. Um, so essentially the voltage across the cell that we would like to see becomes the opposite and instead of the cell generating power essentially all the power that's generated by the other cells in the panel gets dissipated by this cell, um, and as a result, the cell gets really, really hot. Um, and that's a major problem that um, solar panels have to account for in their design to be able to withstand the high temperatures that happen in reverse bias. Um, how the ideal PV design works is to um, use a specialized controller to prevent reverse bias from ever happening. Um, so we're really looking at two key features um, of the importance and relevance of ideal PV in this experiment. Um, the first is the ability to determine when we're nearing the reverse bias condition. Um, and we can do that by tracking the relationship between the current and voltage, which is what we're looking at on these two multimeters here. Um, so as we adjust the voltage across the cell, we can track how the current changes um, and use that to determine if we're nearing reverse bias. On top of that, um, another aspect that we want to monitor is the temperature of the cell. Um, because we know that reverse bias causes really high temperatures, um, and we want to confirm that under normal operation, the cell doesn't reach these kind of temperatures. So that's why we have a thermal camera here, which can take images for us that um, map temperatures onto the location of the cell. And the ex results that we've gotten so far have been pretty encouraging in terms of um, seeing what we'd expect to, and um, what the original experiment by ideal PV that we're replicating saw, um, which is that as we approach reverse bias, um, we see a large decrease in what's known as dynamic conductance, which is that relationship between the current and voltage. Um, and furthermore, the temperature of the cell does not reach very high levels, except when we subject it to reverse bias, um, which is something that we can simulate by using this big power supply here to place a lot of voltage across it in the wrong direction and flow a lot of current through, um, and the temperature of the cell became, becomes hundreds of degrees hotter. So it's encouraging for us to be seeing these results because this allows us to really change the design of the solar panel um, so that it doesn't have to use expensive materials that are designed to tolerate high temperatures, uh, and we can create a more affordable solar panel and roll it out to as many people as possible, starting right here in Claremont.